In the year 2063, humans' bad treatment of the planet has raised the sea levels to the point where most of Earth is flooded now. Only two continents remain, and currently they're fighting a war over land and resources. In the middle of the sea between both continents, there's a military outpost known as the Sentinel with a crew of four soldiers that are starting to grow frustrated. After two years of service, their contract ended three months ago, yet the relief crew hasn't come to pick them up yet. Food is getting scarce, so during a very stormy night, Cassidy and Sullivan decide to try fishing. Surprisingly they do well and fill their big net with plenty of catches. Meanwhile their superior officer Hendricks notices the storm is getting too violent, so he asks Baines to secure the giant explosive that guards the Sentinel. At that moment, the waves begin growing big and violent, affecting the outpost's pipelines. Baines rushes to fix them and gets his hand stuck, causing him to struggle underwater for several minutes until he finally can free himself. Outside, the waves take the net away and the duo loses their bounty. Sullivan tries to grab something again, but the wind is getting too strong and dangerous, so he has to rush back inside before he's taken away too. Everyone makes it back just in time before the enormous wave hits the structure, causing it to shake and pushing water through every entrance, but the sentinel is still standing when it's over. The next morning, the group discuss how to lower the consumption of their resources while having military rations for breakfast. Baines wonders what happened to the fish and gets angry when he hears they lost them, and Sullivan retaliates by insulting Baines for taking parts from his kitchen to repair the main pipes. An argument ensues and Hendricks reminds them to behave like adults, asking them to concentrate on the repairs. Baines wonders why they don't ask for the relief to hurry, but Hendricks reminds him the telegraph is to make reports only. Afterward, Sullivan does the daily report using the telegraph. He informs the base that there have been no events, and they reply there are no events there either, same as the last few months. Sometime later, Sullivan joins Hendricks outside and after making some jokes about their air dancer, Sullivan looks at the sea with the binoculars. He's shocked to discover a ship is approaching, which Cassidy confirms when she checks the radar. Sullivan gets very happy because he assumes it's the relief, but Hendricks is wary and orders Baines to bring some weapons in case it's the enemy. Cassidy tries to contact the ship yet gets no answer, so Hendricks decides to give the ship a chance. He hands Sullivan a gun and tells him to take the boat to meet the ship and make sure there aren't any enemies to worry about. Sullivan immediately takes off and approaches the ship, calling out for any possible passengers, but there's still no answer. With his gun out and ready, Sullivan boards the ship and begins investigating, getting more and more upset when he notices the clues. Objects are covered with dirt, the radio isn't working, and there's untouched food in the cabinets. Hendricks tries to contact him for a status update, but Sullivan ignores him as he finds four bags destined for them. This had been their relief, but something happened to the crew and they disappeared, meaning they missed the chance to go home. Because Sullivan isn't responding, Hendricks assumes he was attacked, so he wants to shoot the ship before it approaches the Sentinel. He asks Cassidy for one of the keys to the explosive, and when she hesitates, he reminds her this is protocol. Together with his own key, Hendricks starts activating the explosive and before he shoots, he tries contacting Sullivan one last time. Thankfully Sullivan does answer this time and the attack is cancelled. However when Cassidy asks for her key back, Hendricks informs her he's keeping both as punishment for her hesitation in following orders. Afterward, Sullivan tows the ship over to the Sentinel. While Hendricks proceeds to investigate the ship, Sullivan reunites with Cassidy and they spend a few moments getting frisky to make up for the scare they just went through. A few hours later while they have a quick iodine bath, Baines informs the team of all the things he's managed to salvage from the ship. He's also sure this was the relief and that the engine hasn't worked in months. Sullivan wants to send a message to the base but Hendricks forbids it until they get more information, since nothing about this makes sense even if it does count as an event. The crew is starting to get tired and wary of Hendricks' attitude, especially when they notice he has both keys now. After the shower, Hendricks checks the ship's navigation history and writes down all the coordinates, which he takes back to the Sentinel to apply them on a map to follow their trip. Meanwhile Cassidy and Sullivan talk about what the world must be like out there, since they haven't seen it in two years. Sullivan admits he sent a message behind Hendricks' back, so they'll have an answer tomorrow. The next morning, Hendricks finds his three soldiers suspiciously waiting next to the telegraph and Baines confesses the truth. Hendricks intends to scold them for it, but at that moment the machine receives an answer. The group gets excited until they read what it says, it's exactly the same message Sullivan sent last night. It's then that they finally realize they lost contact with the base a long time ago, and the computer has just been sending back the no events message Sullivan sends every day. While Hendricks continues to work with the coordinates on the map, Baines begins sneaking into the ship with a plan in mind. One night, Sullivan catches him coming back, but Baines refuses to explain himself. The duo ends up drinking together, and Baines shares some stories about the family that awaits him at home, if home is still around at all. Suddenly, Baines confesses he thinks he can fix the ship. Excited by the hope of escaping, Sullivan rushes to give Cassidy the news and asks her to leave with him to live together in one of the few safe towns that are left on the continent, but Cassidy's hesitant and won't believe what she's hearing. The next day, Sullivan sneaks into the ship with Baines to help him fix the engine and together they manage to finish the job. As soon as they come out, 
they find Hendricks waiting for them, and he orders them to take down the ship to use its parts to fix the Sentinel. He won't allow them to leave because he claims that staying here is their duty, regardless if their contract has ended. Sullivan refuses to die here like it happened to others in the past, and Baines agrees, but when Cassidy joins them, she doesn't show support for them. Not caring about their arguments, Hendrix sends the team to work on repairs, threatening them with his gun if they don't obey. The guys are furious and afraid Hendrix has been too trigger-happy lately, so Cassidy volunteers to talk to him next. Cassidy tells Hendrix she understands he feels after he lost his last squad, but going away doesn't equal dying, if anything it's salvation. Meanwhile Sullivan and Baines are starting to wonder if they'll have to fight their boss to get what they want. Their conversation is interrupted by Hendrix, who admits Cassidy has presented a good argument, since they don't have communications, someone should report to the base. Two people get to stay, and two others should go. Hendrix is obviously staying, and Cassidy has volunteered to stay here as well. Baines is happy with this development, but Sullivan is heartbroken. Moments later, Sullivan talks to Cassidy in private, trying to convince her to come as well, either by replacing Baines or disobeying Hendrix. He's so desperate to make her happy that he even offers to take her place or stay here with her, but Cassidy snaps and tells him she doesn't love him, she's only thought of him as a human necessity. A devastated Sullivan rushes out of the room, and Cassidy breaks down in tears. That night, Sullivan and Baines concentrate on packing. Hendrix gives Sullivan a letter to take to the base, and he comments on the fact that the enemy is exactly like them, soldiers that just want to protect their homes. Sullivan reminds Hendrix they could all leave together, but Hendrix still refuses, saying someone needs to keep an eye on the explosive. Afterward, Hendrix goes to finish his work on the map and the coordinates, making a shocking discovery, the relief ship has steered away from the Sentinel on purpose, which makes no sense. Getting suspicious, Hendrix rushes to check on Cassidy, but he doesn't dare to say a word. The next morning, the team wakes up hearing the alarm blearing because another ship has appeared on the radar. The men rush to get on their positions to defend the Sentinel, and Cassidy tries to get in contact with the ship to no avail. This time Hendrix refuses to send anyone and orders the team to shoot, but their first bullet misses. While they're getting ready to reload, Cassidy notices their ship is missing at the same time Sullivan and Baines finally get to see it clearly once the fog goes away. They refuse to shoot again, but by the time Cassidy comes to warn them, it's too late, Hendrix has his gun out and hits Baines with it. It was Hendrix that put the ship back out last night, and to prove he's being serious, he shoots the air dancer. Baines still refuses to destroy the ship and Hendrix responds by shooting his ear, so Sullivan takes the cannon and destroys the ship before they lose a life. A furious Baines tries to go after Hendrix, but Cassidy knocks him out first with a fire extinguisher. Afterward, Sullivan and Cassidy lock Hendrix up in the pantry and Cassidy takes back both keys. A furious Baines later tries to find Hendrix to kill him and ends up hitting Sullivan when he tries to stop him. Cassidy calms him down with words, but Baines still leaves to get drunk alone and unpack his things, which makes him cry. Sometime later, Cassidy mentions Hendrix needs his iodine bath, but Baines refuses to let him out and announces he quits. Sullivan tells Cassidy that they have no choice but to go through every single channel on the telegraph until they find one is working, and Cassidy takes the chance to confess she hadn't meant what she said about him. She had only wanted him to leave without having to worry about her, but Sullivan is hesitant to accept the excuse. Later in the afternoon, Sullivan takes some food to Hendrix and wonders why he changed his mind about leaving. Hendrix shares the information he got from the coordinates, the relief ship was here three months ago like it was supposed to, but something made it move away. This means there's a traitor among them that wants the explosive. Sullivan doesn't believe him and leaves, locking the door again. While Sullivan spends the rest of his day sending SOS messages to every channel, Baines keeps on drinking and tries to keep himself busy in his workshop, but he soon loses his mind and destroys everything he's built. Later in the evening, Cassidy shares with Sullivan a picture of her as a kid with her family, explaining they were killed by the enemy when she was still a child. The next morning, Baines finds Cassidy sleeping in the comms room. As he spouts nonsense about a missing future, he attacks Cassidy, making it seem as if he wants to take advantage of her. After some struggle, Cassidy manages to push him away, not realizing Baines has stolen the keys. Then Cassidy goes looking for Sullivan to tell him what happened, but at that moment Baines' voice can be heard through the speakers announcing that he'll activate the explosive. Sullivan and Cassidy rush back to the comms room and try to calm him down, mentioning his family as a reason to keep living. Baines cries as he steps away from the controls, but after Cassidy takes back the keys, Baines admits he just forgot the last digit of the activation code. Sullivan thinks it's time to let Hendrix out, but Baines has shocking news, he tried to kill him earlier, but when he entered the pantry, Hendrix was gone. An open window indicated he had ended things for himself. When Cassidy and Sullivan check the pantry, they're devastated to see Baines said the truth. Not being able to deal with his grief, Sullivan reads the letter Hendrix had written to the base, and he's shocked to see Hendrix had requested for his command to be extended. Afterward Cassidy shows the now clean workshop to Sullivan to prove Baines is feeling better and is building again. Baines confesses his wife had been pregnant and he never got to meet the baby, which causes Sullivan to easily forgive him for the drunk outburst. 
Bane shows his gratitude with a hug before getting on the boat to go back to salvaging stuff from the sea. Cassidy is going with him, so Sullivan gives her a gun just in case, and Cassidy thanks him with a kiss. Moments later, Sullivan decides to try fishing again, and when he pulls up the net he discovers Hendrick's body with a wound on his head, meaning someone killed him and there truly is a traitor with them. While Sullivan runs to check on his friend's profiles for clues, Cassidy stares at Baines in the boat, putting together a plan. Next, Sullivan checks on Hendrick's map, coming up with a theory. As a storm begins brewing, Sullivan checks the beacon outside and confirms it can be taken off and moved around. This means someone took the beacon away in the boat and made the ship follow them instead of going to the Sentinel, explaining the coordinates. Then that someone killed the relief team and let the ship float away. A few hours later, only Cassidy comes back from the little trip saying that Baines accidentally fell and died while trying to grab some plastic. Sullivan immediately guesses she killed him and she was the traitor all along, however he's too scared to say anything yet. The next morning, Cassidy wakes up alone in bed. Sullivan talks to her only through the walkie-talkie, explaining he knows she killed everyone and that she's spying for the enemy, but he won't let her have the explosive. Cassidy then realizes she's missing the keys and runs to the comms room, where she finds Sullivan in the middle of activating the explosive. Since they have no future, he doesn't mind blowing the Sentinel up with him still inside. With Sullivan holding her at gunpoint, Cassidy tries to explain people in her homeland are suffering and she hated lying to him, but Sullivan doesn't believe her and activates the explosive. However instead of exploding, the machine displays a funny little phrase that Baines liked to repeat, which makes them realize Baines reprogrammed the explosive so nobody can use it for destruction. In the end, Sullivan and Cassidy have a little talk. They agree that no matter what side of the war comes, they'll protect the Sentinel together and keep on surviving.